Good evening everybody and welcome to Making It Monday, um, the, the sort of penultimate um, Making It Monday we're going to do because obviously it's Christmas next week, well it is as we're recording this anyway. Um, so yes, yeah, so welcome. So we've got a lovely little um, project today. Now the idea about Making It Monday is that it's something really easy, it's something that will take you half an hour to make, maybe an hour tops. I suppose it depends whether you're a new stitcher or whether you've been stitching a while. But the, but the thing is, whatever the case, you'll be able to make one up. Or if, um, I've just seen a post on Facebook on my group and I think the, the young lady has made probably 20 or 30 of the little shopping bags that we did. You know the tiny little dinky, the teeny tiny bags that we did that we could hang on the Christmas tree? Well, I, I'm sure I counted about 20 or 30. So for some people, it's going to be a brilliant idea. For others, it's going to be, well, I'll try it out and see how I get on. Um, but the idea is that it's simple. It's, you can whip them up in no time. There's no thought process. And so far, it's been working really well. So with the this week's Making It Monday, we're going to be making the little gift um, pouch. It's a, it's, a, it's a little gift card holder, I suppose. I'll show you on the side camera in a minute. And it's a really easy make. The pattern's there for you. There you go. It opens up. You can see I've got a couple of cards in there. And of course, you could make it bigger if you wanted to. You know, you could add extra pockets in there if you wanted to. You go figure it out because I've given you the basics to have a go. This has got a bell on it. I don't know if you can hear that. It's got a little bell on it instead of a button. Um, so it's up to you how you how you want where you want to take it I suppose so it's a lovely simple little make I just absolutely adore it and I think you will as well um, you only need scraps of fabric with all of these projects and oh and just as a reminder let's just have a quick reminder so I've got my wires tangled up here that's it I've got a quick reminder of what we've made so far now, there these are not in any particular order because I absolutely cannot remember which order they should be in <laughs> so we've got the little um mitt there like the oven mitt so that's on the if you go to my website lizzycurtis.com there is a little section in the shop that says free patterns um i've had a little bit of a change around in the shop today so i i don't think it's top i think it's a little bit further down i think i've done everything alphabetically which may or may not help you <laughs> but um anyway so the little um oven mitt is there so we're, we're now on pattern number seven Next week will be the last one at pattern number eight. And um, unless you nag me and want more, then I'll stop it there for this year and we'll see how we get on perhaps in the new year. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but I'll be reliant on you telling me if you want to do any more. Um, then I've got the scissor keeper. So now look, this is the truth. I have my scissor keeper with me all the time. It's always beside me. This is the one we actually made in the Facebook Live. If you're not too sure where the Facebook Lives are, if you go to the top of my page, Lizzie Curtis, and look at videos, they're all in there. So you can have a look at them anytime you like. Um, so yeah, so that's the one that we actually made. Um, this was the first one that I ever did. And I was inspired to make this by a lady called Karen. So thank you very much, Karen, for that inspiration. And then we had the glasses case. So I've got the little glass glasses case here. And I think that this is the one that I made on the Facebook Live as well. And again, that's another free little pattern for you. It's got a popper. So if you want to know how to put a snap fastener on, go check it out. Um, oh, I've got the second one there. <laughs> that's the one that's uh, on the front of the pattern. Um, oh, and then this one. Now this is the little, um, it's like a card wallet or a coin purse, something like that. Um, this is possibly my favorite so far. Um, we've done a little bit of crumb quilting, sort of, it's not, it's not how some people do crumb quilting, it's how Lizzie does crumb quilting. <laughs> so there's no rules. So you can see that it's, it was all one piece and then we just stitched the tab all the way around, if you can see it like that. And then this little piece here, if you can see sticking out, oh, let's do it that way so you can see it sticking out, that just slides under the, the tab slides under the loop. This week I've got my words in order and that's what that one looks like. That's a free pattern. Um, then we had the car tidy. 
or anywhere you like tidy which has the deep pocket there and it has two pockets on the front now I made mine in strips they're actually not um, two and a half inch strips I'll be honest with you they're not they were Moda scrap bags that I bought from my daughter <laughs> Avid Crafts and uh, so they're all different widths I have to be honest with you there but I think it measures about yeah about seven inches square something like that seven by eight um, and it's yeah so it's got the two useful pockets um, at the front and it's got the big storage pocket at the back and you can hang it now you could hang that from hang it from the tree hang it from the tree why not um, fill, fill it with gifts it might fall over um, you could hang it from um, like a you know the, the little sort of cupboard um, little sort of knob there you can hang it from there if you wanted to whatever you like but the pattern is there for you to enjoy and then we've got our teeny tiny shopping bag <laughs> which is teeny tiny don't ever think this is going to be enormous because it's not but it's perfect for hanging from your tree it's perfect for putting chocolate coins in you know when we get to easter those patterns will still be on my website i'm not going to delete them they'll always be there um, if they run out I'll just top them up I don't I keep an eye on it so I'll make sure they don't run out um, but that could easily hang on your tree I don't know how, we, how where you're going to see it but so if I could just sort of hang it there there you go so you can see what it looks like I'll take it off because I've got a nice little train there so <laughs> I don't want to cover up the train I don't know you can see it or oh, just about Yes, so those are the free patterns so far. The little bag, the little tidy away, the little coin purse, the little glasses case, the little scissors holder, and the little sort of um, heart-shaped, um, it's like a grabby thing for anything that's warm. Please, if you're going to use it for the oven, put thermalan or something in there that'll stop your hands from burning. I've just used regular wadding because that's what I demonstrated with, but you use whatever is suitable for you, okay? So um, I'll pop those to one side. So tonight we're going to be making the little uh, wallet. I'm just going to switch the camera over. Like, and uh, there we go. So you can see exactly what it looks like there. So it's got a little bell on the front because it suits my fabric. And it has this flap here that folds over. And you can just unloop it. So we've got a tiny little loop again today because um, it just suits the project. And um, we did the little... Um, handles on the teeny tiny bag and it's the same width so it is small be warned <laughs> and then inside we've got um, two little pockets there um, and you could add more cards in there now this one doesn't have any stabilizer the one I'm going to do tonight has got a medium weight stabilizer so uh, I wouldn't use wadding I absolutely would not use wadding um, because it's just not big enough to take the bulk of the wadding if you do try, um, tonight I'm going to use stabiliser and I've, I've only, I've left a sort of a quarter inch gap all the way around. I'll show you when we get to that point. So that's basically it. So although it's the most simplest make in the whole wide world, it's something that you could um, knock up after lunch on a Sunday, well, we haven't, we've only got one Sunday left now, um, to put maybe um, one of your grandchildren's cards in there or maybe your partner's card in there or maybe you've got children that are just going to have a little gift card. I don't know, you could put a gift card this side and, well, we shouldn't be using cash, but if you've got some cash that's um, been disinfected, <laughs> you can pop it in the pocket there and maybe give some cash, but I don't, I'm, I'm not recommending that at all. But maybe you can put some little treats in there, something like that. But the idea is that it's a simple make. It's nothing complicated. Otherwise, it just limits to what we can do, doesn't it? It just limits the people that want to make it and it limits it to, to all of us that just want to do a little bit of simple stitching, which is exactly what this is. So, if we stay on this side camera here, I'll just get rid of my mouse so you don't have to stare at that. And I'll just pop it there so we can have a look at it. We can keep it in, 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 our, in our eye, if you like. Well, that's it. Let's just do it so you can see it. <laughs> there we go. So, um, so what you should have is the pattern downloaded from the website. Like I keep saying, it, they are free. Um, if you, um, you may well have gone onto the website and haven't got a clue what you're doing um, all you need to do is put um, free in the coupon code box that's at the checkout so go all the way through the checkout it'll say it's 50 pence apart from the glasses case and you get to checkout and there's a coupon code box I think it's on the bottom left 
put free in there it accepts the coupon and then you get it for nothing okay but if you do pay 50p that's entirely up to you but most of that goes in paypal charges so nothing comes to me so don't don't feel that you need to pay me because you don't so so you should get the pattern like this so this is the the mock-up that i did the other day little little set dressing there tells you exactly what you need you may well find that we need to trim some of this back talk about that as we go along very simple instructions my patterns are usually very very comprehensive but for these projects i'm keeping it really simple and the idea is that you, you you've got the the um written word here and the pictures but also obviously today we've got the video tutorial which makes everything so much easier and then again a little bit of incentive on the back to you can see what this looks like a little bit of inspiration and a merry christmas from me so hugs and love from lizzie so that's that's basically it so if we have a quick look at the front here it says what we need it's quite clear nice big writing um, like I say, you might need to trim this back. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, stabiliser, I've said a medium weight, but that's optional. You'll need a button to be to, so you can stitch. You know, sorry, you can stitch that on the front. And, and really, that's it. So it's a really lovely, basic, simple design. If we go to the first instruction, it says to fold our fabric at two and a quarter inches and one and three quarter inches. So it looks like this. So if you look at that, it looks like a concertina. So we'll, we're going to go through this one step at a time. OK, and I'll have the instructions to hand so we can see exactly what, what we're talking about and what it looks like. So if I pop them there, you don't need to see them. I'm going to bring my machine in so I'm ready to do a bit of stitching. So bring the big old beastie in and uh, it's so heavy this machine but it does the trick so i thought i'm gonna i've got some I'll shoot, uh, let me just show you what fabric i'm using so this is going to be my outside fabric and you can see straight away that i've put um stabilizer on there but it's actually a quarter of an inch away from the outside edge and that's because i don't need the stabilizer um in the seams it's just a it's a waste and b it adds bulk and something this small it really doesn't need any more bulk um, then i'm going to use some gorgeous cave fabric which i've already pressed into shape and, and i thought well you know what you're not going to be able to see my creases you're not going to be able to see my lines so i've got a piece of plain fabric here that i'm going to show you how to fold this but this is all ready to go okay then i've got my little bell so i've got another little bell that i'm going to stitch on and i've got my little loop here um, which in the front of the instructions it tells you it's one inch by two um, two inches um, and we're just going to stitch that it's the tiniest little thing now since last week when i couldn't remember what um, the little um, piece of fabric is called that you start off stitching with um, somebody messaged me and said well we i call it a leader and a follower other people call it a donkey didn't like donkey but I quite like leader and follower. So you could do that. And if I can find a scrap, I will show you what I'm talking about, okay? So just going back to this little scrap here. So this is my white piece that you'll be able to see fairly clearly. In fact, I might put it on my ironing mat just to raise it up a little bit because everything sticks to this, which is lovely. So let's just bring that up. Now, you can't see my crease lines, but I've got a crease here and I've got a crease there. Let me just try and make that so it's obvious. OK, so that's already pressed, but I'm going to show you what you're going to do. So in the instructions, it says mm, uh, fold your fabric at two and a quarter inches. So what I would do is I would get your ruler or tape measure and measure up two and a quarter inches from here. Now I made a little cut in my fabric or what you can do is just make a little mark either end. Okay, so just either end you're going to make a little mark. If you wanted to, use a heat erasable pen and draw all the way across. And then what you're going to do is pinch that up. So you're going to pinch that side, you're going to pinch that side and you're just going to lift that and so it goes under. Okay, and you'll see there we go. It's great. You can see where that lands up, ends up, <laughs> ends up. I've got my teeth in straight tonight. <laughs> so you can see how that's folded underneath there. OK, the next measurement is one and three quarters. So once again, you bring your ruler in 
you measure one and three quarters, you make a little mark, and I've already pressed mine, so it saves me a little bit of time, and you can either draw all the way across, or you can just do a little mark, either end, like that, and then you're just going to fold that up. Now you might not see that when you fold, so you might want to do that from the other side, whatever's easier for you. And you're just going to fold that up. And all of that, let's just get that so it sits right, all of that then makes your pocket. So when it's folded up like this, you can see you've got your pocket going along here. And you'll see also that the fold doesn't come as far as the raw edge. It's lovely seeing it on the white fabric because obviously you're seeing right through it. Now when this is folded and pressed, this is a little bit wider than your um, backing fabric. So it's about a quarter of an inch. So where I've said seven and a quarter inches to cut, I would just cut at seven. So I've already cut mine to size, so your backing sits beautifully over the top. But you can see how that's folded, okay? It's one fold at the front and then one fold underneath. And that just, if you just lift that up, you'll have this, it's, it's, a, it's almost like um, uh, a half an inch really, I'm not going to measure it, but the, needless to say, that fold that's underneath there, which is showing beautifully on the screen, it means that when you stitch, you're not stitching all this fabric, okay? The idea of that is we're reducing bulk on the seam. If we were to bring the fold line right down to the seam edge, down here, down the raw edge, it means you're going to be stitching through well, four layers of fabric when you stitch the backing on. There's no point. So obviously we've, I've left it so it's a raw edge and it's nice and easy. So having said all that, let me pop that to one side. And this is, <laughs> isn't it gorgeous? It's, this is the fabric I'm going to be using, okay? And you can hardly see, but there is, it, it's, it's folded exactly the same. If I bring that up, you can see that it's longer at the front, just as we did before, and this part here. And so that's what it should look like, okay? With that folded, lovely um, edge there, ready for your cards. The next thing we need to do is to add the loop. The loop goes in on the right side of your, um, your design. So this is the left, this is the right. And if you look at the picture, it says, fold the tab to make a quarter, sorry, a half, a quarter inch wide loop and stay stitched to right hand side. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. And you'll see my little loop is the same fabric as the, as the inner. So that when, it fold, when it's folded over, it's gonna look really nice. So we'll just pop that on my mat there. We'll bring in the machine. Oh, leader and follower. Yep, that's what I was going to do. And because we're finished with the white piece now, I'll use that. I'll just cut a piece off, um, which seems such a shame. But it was just a scrap piece of sheeting. It wasn't anything um, important. So let's just um, cut this into two pieces like that. So I've got two pieces now, it doesn't have to be the same size. All you're gonna do is fold that in half to make a little sort of, I don't know, little scrap piece, there's four layers there. It's quite nice because my I know my machine will grab that. So let's just um, get that lined up. So all it means is that when we come along here and we get to the end of where we're stitching, we can just pop our loop that we've folded in half, look, if you have a look, this it's one inch by two, so it's one inch across, okay? And you're folding those long raw edges to the middle. We've done this before. We did this with the little teeny weeny, um, teeny tiny bag. So the two long raw edges go to the middle and then you fold it again. You need a quarter inch um, sort of loop really. You want it to be neat and tidy, anything bigger and it's going to look clumsy, okay? It's going to look a little bit clumsy. So let's just, I'm just going to move my mouse off my computer, so bear with. Um, I'm, and good evening to everybody that's watching. This is on a Facebook Live, and it's going to be eventually on to YouTube, probably in the next couple of days. So all I need to do is pop my little loop underneath there that I want to stitch and all it all I'm going to do is do a continuous stitch. Now if you want to you could actually get your stiletto or your um, little pokey tool and you could just help it on its way but it look at that it's absolutely fine. 
you could cut this piece off so this is your your leader <laughs> you could cut this off and pop it here or you can just get a second piece fold it up and then as you come to the end of your loop you just carry on stitching I just want to make sure that's lined up I'm doing this at a funny angle guys <laughs> and then you just carry on stitching so that's what you end up with a little a little loop right in the middle of a leader and a follower I much prefer that and so the next stage is to actually just stay stitch this onto your little project here so find the center um, you could um, stitch this if we in fact let's do it and let, never mind say it let's just do it I'm going to stay stitch my pleat down my fold so an eight, about an eighth of an inch seam allowance is quarter of an inch on this nothing more is required let's just trim that thread away to make it neat so I've stitched my my fold down there just to hold that and if you wanted to find the middle fold your piece in half on the short end and put a little V out of that just cut a little V and that little V there what is the best way to put it there you go you can see it on the my machine that little V now is right in the center of that short end so I can line up my loop with that and uh, make sure that my loop is central so I'm putting the folded edges of my tab to the outside it's not crucial just keeps everything tidy just make sure it is lined up. You could put pins in this just to hold it um, by all means, because this is not going to sh sort of stay still. Or put quilters tape. Use some, use some of your lovely quilters tape. So all I'm doing is holding my loop down. It still wants to wriggle, so we're gonna let it and just stay stitch over the top, okay? And that's what that should look like okay so that's what it says on picture number two which i haven't numbered but i'm sure you can work it out that's picture number two and that shows the loop in place okay so the next thing we're going to do is actually um stitch the outside to the this inside so you're going to put the the right side of your backing fabric to the right side of your wallet the inside of that and so it's right sides together there's no up or down with this it's just the same size there's the back there's the front and we're going to stitch all the way around but we're going to leave a turning gap at the top of the purse I find that easier of, of about um, well I'd say about two and a half three inches I'm not going to measure it and then we're just going to do a little back stitch and quarter of an inch seam allowance put your walking foot on if you find your fabric shifts as fabric will do and then all the way around just hold your pleats in place or pin and just you can you'll see that it will wriggle so just hold on to it now the great thing about this stripy fabric is that it's wriggly stripy fabric which means it's not going to show if I go wriggly so <laughs> it's a great fabric if you use stripes you really need to be careful of how well you stitch because it'll show up <laughs> so this is going over the loop there coming up to that final corner so my starting point was here so i'm going to finish about there oops went a bit wavy there so there we go so that's i've gone all the way around and i've got my little turning gap just here now the great thing to use at this point now is pinking shears pinking shears are your friend so just cut into that take some of that bulk away um, these are perfect for going round curves um, because they they do you know when you go around curves and you clip into it well this does that without the bother of actually doing all those little clips so you could just leave it like that or you could take it all the way down if you're going to do that um, don't do it across your turning gap okay just start cutting sort of from here and along and from here and along but I'm just going to leave it um, exactly like that just my corners cut off and I've taken some of the excess away where the loop is because it's a little bit bulky there so there we go so I'm going to turn it through there we go and this is where you need a um, first of all 
hopefully you've done a nice back stitch and you've locked your stitches in place because this is where your seam would all rip open if you hadn't. And then you need a nice blunt tool to be able to poke those corners out. So I've got, I use a um, parchment tool. And if your pocket, this is a good thing to see, if your pocket ends up on this side, all you need to do is turn it to the back, okay? Turn it to the inside of your, of your pouch. So poke those corners out. Be gentle because we've just cut into them. So you want it to be... Um, you want to be gentle with your corners. You don't want, it, it, the worst thing could happen is that your tool goes through the corner and you, 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 um, you have a, get a hole, basically. So you'd need to turn it through again, do another bit of stitching and just repair that little hole that you might have made. So there we go. So that's our inside almost done. There's our turning gap there. So the best thing to do now is to actually put this under the iron. We've got to still do our pockets. We've still got to stitch our turning gap and we've also got to stitch our button on, but we're almost there. So just make sure that your seams are lovely and pressed. So we'll give that a little press and just make sure that you just roll those seams between your fingers just to get that um, looking beautiful. And because you've turned it inside out, it's going to be um, quite creased. So this is why we put the um, iron on it to make it nice and neat. So ah, Mel says she can't get the fold. So I will go through that again, Mel, in just a moment. Even though I cut my piece, I think we'll be fine to show you. And the other thing is you can watch this back. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily need to do that because you're, you can watch it back. So there, look at that. It's so garish, isn't it? I love a bit of cave. The outside looks quite neat. I mean, you could um, put somebody's initial on there. You could do some applique on there. It's a really, it's a, a blank canvas. You could do some gorgeous um, free motion work. Oh my goodness me, I was just thinking of the trio of purses that we've done and uh, I've got the pattern on the website. Look what you could do. You could do those flowers all the way along there and create something gorgeous, couldn't you? I think so. Um, and there's the other one. You could have done that one on there. So don't think you have to leave it like that because you absolutely... This is just a starting point, surely. So then I'm just going to um, press my turning gap seam in and just get that nice and straight. And if you pull it, it'll help straighten those seams up, okay? And you can then top stitch all the way around or you can glue. I don't mind you gluing. I shan't tell anybody if you've glued. I just want to get that a little bit better because it's not how I would like it. That's a little bit better. Um, it doesn't need a steam. It's fine. It's just a, a small little piece of cotton fabric. So a steam, you know, it's not a piece of patchwork. We don't need to go crazy. So there we are. Let's just see what that looks like. I'm, I'm going to need the iron again in just a little while. So let's just pop that to one side. So let's let's ignore the fact we've got a turning gap there, guys. Let's just ignore that for the moment. And what I need to do is to actually do the top stitching on here. Now, when we look at the pattern, I want you to have a look. So we've done this bit where we've chopped our corners off. You can see I've done pinking shears along the, the um, side there. Um, and this is where we're at now. And it says here, measure three and five eighths from the left and sew from top to bottom. Repeat to get two pockets and a flap. So that's three and five eighths, okay? And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do it on the plain side, as long as I make sure that that's the flap end where the button is or the button loop is. So from this side here, it's three and five eighths. Um, so it's three and five eighths. So I've made a little mark, you'll not be able to see it, but I'll do a line and then I can use that line to stitch. I'll do it and then I'll hold it up. Oh, you can see beautifully. And then from that line there, you're doing another three and five eighths. Now look, if I don't do metric, okay? I don't do centimeters and millimeters because I'm old school. Um, so if somebody wants to convert that to metric, that would be lovely. If not, 
It's only a unit of measure, isn't it? So get yourself an imperial ruler like this. And if I say three and five eighths, it's pretty, pretty darn easy. OK, so let's just pop that to one side. So now that's what it looks like. OK, so those are the two places that I'm going to stitch. I'm going to stitch along there and I'm going to stitch along there. OK, and that will give us our little um, pockets. And if we look at the right side, you can see that it's still one piece. So now when you're stitching from this side, I mean, I'm, you wouldn't normally do it from this side, but I'm going to do it because then you can see it. Make sure that your pocket is following the line of your stitching. If we go against it, it might knock it out of place. So with this, you're going to do a very, 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 very neat little back stitch so nothing too exaggerated one one or two stitches is plenty and then when we come to the end again just one stitch is fine and it makes a really neat job now you can still see the blue of my pen so we'll get that ironed off in just a second and again we're just going one stitch in fact, I'll do that again because I was just off the I was just off the edge of the fabric there, and then straight across. Okay, there we are. Now we've still got our turning gap, guys. Can you see? It's just here. So this is the moment where you're either going to hand stitch that together, you're going to glue it, or you're going to top stitch. If you top stitch, you're going to top stitch all the way around. And you can see now where my, my pockets are going to be. There's one pocket here and there's one pocket here. So what I'll do is I'll just trim my threads. Now I like this fairly neat, so um, I would probably put a little bit of glue on this just to hold it together. It's something that's not going to be worn, so it doesn't have to be super, super strong. Um, and it is only the turning gap, so it's nothing that's going to take much pressure. So I'm just going to top stitch all the way around that. If you're going to top stitch the turning gap, you might as well top stitch all the way around. And I'll do it, I'll do it from the front because that's what you're going to see. So as, try and keep it as um, straight as you can and just, you could up the length of your stitch now because it'll, if for top stitching it looks nice when it's got a long stitch. And I'm just going to pull that out slightly. There we go. So literally, I suppose, is it an eighth of an inch, a couple of mil? Hold on, let's just put one more stitch there. It's always one more stitch, isn't it? And then just carry all the way round. I must admit, this could have been ironed a little bit better. <laughs> but when you do it yourself, you'll just make such a neat job of it. I'm kind of um, stitching sideways here. <laughs> and then, there we go, back to where we started. Don't do a back stitch. Just, it's just one more stitch. Just go over those first two or three stitches and uh, break your threads, and that's plenty. Okay, let's just snip those ends there. And so that's it top stitched all the way around, but obviously we've still got the issue of this fold here, and obviously we need to also stitch our bell on, so let's do that. So I've got my iron already on. And all you're going to do, and you could, this is where you could use steam if you wanted to, because you want these creases to be really crispy. So make that a lovely, can you see the difference with an iron? <laughs> Bring that over to the top, give it a little bit of space, you know, don't take it all the way over, and iron, and we'll do it from the back as well, and our blue marks should go. So let's uh, make sure they all go and make it nice and crispy, as I always say. So there's our little wallet done and we've created the pockets inside. In fact, let's transfer the cards and then you'll see what that looks like. Then they're cards of no significance whatsoever, I promise you. <laughs> oh dear, there we go. So you've got your two cards in there.
And of course, like I said, you could always put money in there. You could um, add a little bit of cash in one of those sides. Um, we don't deal with checks anymore, but maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe you've got some sort of voucher you can give that you might have. And then that closes beautifully like that. And then, of course, if you're going to put the little button on, you just want a double thread. It's always easy with a double thread. You could take your pen, open up your loop, put yourself a little mark where you want the button or your bell in this case to go. Let me just take the cards out. Um, and so the, the bell has a lovely sh um, sort of shank to it. It's, um, let me, I don't know if I can hold it so you can see it, um, but it's, it's great because it just, you just, your needle just goes through like that. So let's pop the button on. So make sure you don't stitch all the way through your pocket. So you just want to make sure that your fingers are in there and you're stitching here. So we'll do a couple of stitches just to secure that knot. And I've got a little end there, which I shall just cut. So that's nice and secure. I've got my bell, little tinkly bell. There you go, you can hear it. And I'm just going to put my fingers in the pocket, look underneath just to make sure I don't go all the way through. If you want to do this before you can, but you, you won't really know, not really, where your loop's going to go. And your, your creases, your folds that you do might be slightly different to mine. You might make your pockets a little bit bigger than mine. Um, so I would always say do it afterwards, but be cautious of how you're stitching. And I bet, I bet anybody's gonna come back to me and say, I forgot what you said and I stitched the pocket but we'll see, we'll see. So because it's double thread, we don't have to do too many stitches, but just make sure that it is secure because it's going to hold maybe a precious card. I think you can get cards for, for coffee places and things like that, as long as they're open near you and safe. And then cut your threads. There we go. Let's pop that in the pincushion. So there's our little bell. Obviously that's quite seasonal. <laughs> having a little bell <laughs> but you know it works so then all you're going to do is just pop your loop over and that's just going to hold it beautifully and just straighten it up there we go and you might say oh well the loop looks quite big because when when it you know it has to go over the size of the the button or the bell or whatever you're going to use so the loop does have to be quite big and now I'm struggling to get it out um so don't stint on that I'm going I'm not going to open it because it just doesn't want me to open now <laughs> But that's the little wallet made. Like I said to before, this one was made and there is no stabilizer in that. So it's really soft. Um, so it's up to you um, how you want it to feel and how you want it to look. But that's it. So the idea, like I said before, the idea of making it Monday is that we all get together and we do a little bit of stitching, something super, super easy, something that's not going to take all those concentration levels and, and headache. Um, and I saw the, the um, little note there about folding, but if you watch the video afterwards, you'll soon get the gist of what I've said. Just follow that, look at the pictures. You need to get that up down V in your fabric and then you're well away. And once you've done it once, it'll be like, why didn't I get it the first time? It's, we're all the same, okay? A lot of us are visual learners and certainly a video helps you. So that, my dears, is making it Monday. So it's not even quite an hour. So we made that, I know I cut it out beforehand, but I made that in, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes, something like that. So I hope you enjoy that and I hope you make loads and uh, it's been lovely to spend a bit of time with you, share my Christmas tree with you. I've got the lights on, I don't know if you can see. Um, just before you go, um, just to all remind you that I've got a fantastic, fantastic pattern and workshop on the website now. If you go to lizzycurtis.com, we've got the trio of purses. And I'm sure all of you have seen me talk about the trio of purses before, but I'm just gonna quickly run through it. This is the pattern that you'll see on the website. It's called a trio of purses. It comes with a kit, so I have to send that out to you. Otherwise, it's, it's, um, it, you're not gonna be able to make these particular ones. Um, you can just buy the pattern on its own and you put your own fabrics to it. 
but each one of these little purses is individual it all has free motion embroidery on and applique all sorts of different lovely techniques and um, I ran a workshop with this a couple of weeks ago in fact it was probably only a week ago and I said the idea of making these little purses is that we make pictures so each one of this these are a picture if I get it the right way around so you're making these pictures with your free motion embroidery and your um, applique and this is the one that I made um, on the night so again you're making that picture but actually it turns into the most exquisite little purse there's a little little pocket there so um, the trio of purses is on my website now. Go and have a look at that. It's a workshop on the 3rd of January and uh, places will be closed on the 28th of December for that because I need to post that out to you. Um, I'm afraid my ladies in the US and Canada and abroad perhaps won't get them. So obviously you can attend the workshop, uh, but you probably won't have your kits. The kits are almost identical to what you see here and you'll get tons left over as well. The kits are gorgeous. They've been put together especially for me, for you, by Kim Porter. Look her up, she's amazing. So that's it. Just wanted to remind everybody about that because I know at the moment they're selling like hotcakes so there won't be many more days for them to be available on the website. And I know a lot of people have asked me about them. So next week will be our last Making It Monday because then it's Christmas and I'm on my holidays for about a week, not going anywhere, just taking a break, chillaxing with John and Millie the dog. And then we start full pelt in January. I'm going to have a little bit of time off in January, but we felt start full pelt again with workshops, with stitching. We may be doing Making It Mondays. You just let me know because I'll be guided by you. Um, and that's it really, just looking forward to a brand new year. New patterns on, on my online sewing group, the Gold Group. So looking forward to that. Um, uh, I asked everybody what they wanted for 2021 and actually we've got so many ideas, we're now going into 2022. <laughs> so that's fun and exciting. And I'm really looking forward to sort of realising some of those ideas that the ladies and gents gave me today. It's really exciting times, really indeed is. So that's it from me. So I'm glad that you could join me this evening. We've had a lovely big audience and I'm really proud and pleased that you could join me. And I shall speak to you all again next Monday here on Lizzie Curtis and I'll see you again very soon. So join me next week with Making It Monday.